Hello, guys. So can you hear my voice? I think we have um, six uh, attenders in total, and uh, I'm not sure the other guys. Should we wait? Should we wait for for them, or just start the training? Well, guys, you can just um, chat from the classroom window. Okay, I think uh, let's just let's just begin our training. Okay, we have three guys over here, and nice to meet you guys. Welcome to the Year Start Technical Training. This is Gavin. Nice to meet you all. And today I'm going to introduce how to access the backend of the PBX with SSH and how to use commands to control the PBX and to do some troubleshootings with commands. And if you have any questions, you can just ask me from the question window and I will check and give you an answer. And um, you can find the document from the handouts, okay? So all uh, the PPTs um, and the commands you can find from the handout. Let's, be, let's begin our training. Okay, and uh, the course include three parts today. And the first part, the first part is about the uh, Linux command. And the second part is about the asterisk command to do some troubleshootings, okay? And the next is um, how to capture a CI log and analyze a system log. And what is the difference between a CI log and a system log, okay? So uh, in terms of the commands, as you can see, we, we have uh, two kinds of commands here. The first is Linux, okay? Another is asterisk. And the Linux uh, actually is an um, operation system. As our PBX is based on Linux. So if you have experience with other Linux devices, you will know the commands are almost the same. And uh, about the asterisk commands are mainly used to capture a CRI log and to, to learn what, or how is a die plan script going through during a call. And uh, that is uh, the important things about the asterisk, the die plan. And I will tell you uh, later about the die plan, okay? So what we will learn after this training? You will know how to use a command to check the system information, to check the configuration parameters, and to check the states of the extensions and chunks, and to do a first round troubleshootings for some issues like a registration issues, okay? In addition, you will know how to capture a CI log and uh, you will see uh, what kind of information or messages uh, we, we, we get from the CI log and how to use CI log to do a troubleshooting and um, uh, or to do the troubleshooting on the trunk, on the extensions, something like that, okay? Let's just start our training. Uh, from the very beginning, um, what is a way to access uh, PBX from the backend? Normally, uh, we, the user just log in the web, the PBX web to check the information like this, okay? We have a website and you can just log in and to check the extension chunks and to do some configurations securities and uh, to do some troubleshooting capture uh, pickup says logs over, over here from the web okay but for some um, such occasions we also need to use um, ssh to log in the pbx from the back end to 
to do some troubleshooting to uh, check um, uh, some parameters some and do uh, to realize some new features with type plan so uh, also <clears throat> for some configuration so you can only use the root uh, permission to change the parameter from the backend so that is why we also need to access from the backend okay and back to a point we have two ways to access the pbs the first is a console cable it is a um, uh, physical connection with a specific uh, cable named rs232 one side connect to the the pbx and um, you, you will see there is a console console port on the on the bank or the front of the pbx Another side connect to your PC, and also you need a USB um, converter to connect to your PC. Okay, so normally we use uh, SSH uh, because it is um, uh, it is uh, easy to way, and uh, we can just. Uh, uh, access the PBX with. Uh, uh, the SSH securely and uh, more easily. Okay. So, in what kind of situations do we need to use the console cable? Uh, because uh, when sometimes the customer cannot cannot log in the web and uh, uh, the customer uh, doesn't enable the SSH, so the that's the things, and that's the one, that's the way to, for, uh, for us to log in or access a PBX is to use a console cable. So that is the uh, last way. If you do not enable SSH and you cannot log in the web, so most in most cases, we just use um, SSH. Okay. And uh, the first thing to enable, uh, to make us to, to log in the SSH, you have to go to the web and check the security setting. You can see here, we have a console and SSH access. Okay, you, you should enable it. And here is the default port 1822. And here is the password. Okay, it is a red, one, but uh, for the training, I just change it to um, like a year star two zero two. That for me to remember the the password. Okay. So um, we know the uh, the tools to access the PPX. The next is how to just log in the SSH, okay? We usually use the PuTTY. Here you can see, um, it is free and we can just download easily. Uh, before logging, you have to make sure the SSH, SSH has enabled from the web, web. Okay, enable it first, save it and apply it, okay? So we just uh, highly rec uh, recommend you to enable SSH access uh, because for some troubleshooting, so we, we can enable it and we can access it. Otherwise, we have to use a console cable. Okay, but in most cases, the customer or uh, do not have the, this console cable. Okay. I think you guys must be uh, familiar with the, the ways to log in, uh, but um, I will tell you something uh, about the logging. Okay, the, uh, it's quite simple. From the hostnet, you just input the PBX uh, IP. Over here and change the port to 1822. Okay, but another thing I want to tell you is to 
increase increase the buffer size uh, in case of the logs will be uh, overwritten you know there will be a lot of logs running over the window so just increase uh, increase the uh, buffer size and uh, you can check check more informations okay and then just open it and uh, username username is always a support and the password is um, you can copy from the web and right click to paste it okay here you can see support at IPPX. that means we have uh, access to the backend from the uh, backend pbx and um, for some cases um, if the customer do not have a putty you can download it okay but for um some cases the customer do not want to download it you can also use the cmd window or the if the pc is a mac you can also use a terminal to log in and i will show you the command it's like this ssh username the ip address of the pbx and don't forget about the oh sorry the port okay ssh support at the the ip address and the port and input the password okay that is to the same you can use um, cmd or the terminal to log in the ssh okay so um may i know if you guys um, have a putty in your pc and you if you can just uh, log in one of your test pbx you can just uh, open your putty and uh, you can just follow me step by step to test the uh, uh, these different commands okay and if you do not have it you can just check uh, follow me and check me how to do that or you can download download the the video and um, practice after the training okay so uh, the first let's go to the first part Linux command. Okay. Uh, the first command uh, I would like to introduce to you guys is I'm sorry. Okay, I make it the window bigger. Okay. The first one is is if config. Okay, uh, with this command you can check the the network interfaces into uh, informations such as the uh, the IP address. Here, this is the IP of the of your PBX, and also you can check the MAC address here, and uh, something like uh, the MTU size and um, you can check this is a eth0 and uh, because i just uh, enable uh, single mode network here network single all right if i use a dual mode network we will have a uh, one port okay so if you enable the dual mode you will see another one is eth1 so eth0 means the lan port and eth1 means the one port okay this is a um, quite easy and common in command to check the, the 
IP things. And let's move on. And the next is um, pain. This is quite easy and simple. And um, it will help us to check the network reachability. Okay. So if you uh, if your PBX uh, have a connection to a TA or TG gateway, or uh, you want to check the connection between the PBX and the SIP phones, you can just use this ping. Like uh, if I ping one of my SIP phone, like here, uh, this 29.2. Here you can see we get a response and uh, get the latencies of uh, the other side. That means uh, the connection between the PBX and the safe phone is, is reachable. Okay, that's quite simple. And next is about look, NS lookup. Okay, NS lookup, um, it can help us to check a domain. If a domain can be reserved by the DNS server, you have a set for the PBX. Okay. So when you set up new PBX, you have to configure the network information and the DNS server. Okay. For this PBX, the DNS server is 8.8.8.8. Okay. So with this command, NS lookup, we can just check for example let me check this domain here you can see the result here the DNS server and you can see the IP of this domain so that means the uh, domain can be received by our DNS server this is a quite uh, useful um, because um, uh, for some for some case, I will show you from here the trend. Um, most of the time, the ITSB, the service provider, will give you a re reduced uh, trunk uh, credentials and the username, password over here, and the host name and domain. Uh, in, in most of the time. Uh, the service provider will uh, provide you an IP like this. Okay. But sometimes they also give you a domain, domain name. So um, once you find the trunk is um, failed to reject and uh, also you check the domain, uh, you check the host name and the domain is not the IP, it's a domain name. So in this case, you can just log in the SSH and use this command, NSLOOKUP and with the domain name, to check if our DNS server can reserve this domain to a correct IP. That is a, a, a way to do the troubleshooting for some chunk issues. Okay, so this is a useful command, NSLOOKUP. And let's go move on. Next, I will show you some commands to check system informations. Okay, so the first is uh, how to check the firmware version of your PBX. You can use the CAT ETC version. Okay, you can see we get the version. This is a, a latest one. And um, with this new firmware, we have a lot of new features. You guys can have a try. Okay, for example, we have um, a SIP, FQD and SIP. I think this is a quite important and quite helpful. Okay, I, I'm not sure if you guys have tried or tested these features. Okay, for the FQDN, 
you know, this is our new features about the latest firmware. We have a SIP access. Okay, you can see what is uh, this main SIP access of QDN. Um, before we can just uh, remotely register our link as uh, app, okay? But for the SIP phone, the hand, handset phone, we have to do the port forwarding to if you if the customer want to have a remote a remote the registry re, reject to the PBX. For example, uh, two SIM phones, one is in the office, another is in the 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 home. We have to do the port forwarding. But now we can use a FQDN SIP access. That means we can use um, uh, the FQDN to reject the a safe phone remotely uh, to our PBX. Okay, this is uh, one of our new uh, features. And uh, other features, um, you may just check the um, check the release note. Okay, let's back to our training. And um, the next command is uh, the message. D N E S G. Okay, um, this is a um, command to help you check the hardware issues. If you have a hardware related issues like uh, the module detection is failed, the LAN port or one port cannot work, uh, the indicator lights are off, or uh, something like a uh, hardware issue. Okay, you can just input. DMESG. You can remember it as a de device message. Okay. After in press uh, enter, you can see lots of running here. Okay. It will automatically generate a hardware boot log. Uh, you can just copy the log and send to us. We will confirm if it is a hardware issue. Okay. The MESG for the hardware issues. And you can just right click here, copy, log, and paste it, paste it to uh, the path and send it to us. Okay. This is uh, quite simple. The MESG. Okay. Let's move on. The next command is um, PS. This is a, a very common Linux command, right? With this command, PS, you can check the current running processes. And we can filter a specific process, like uh, if we want to check the process of asterisk, okay? We can input the PS, grab, and the name of the process. Okay, we can see the process as the risk is running. Okay, if the asterisk is down, that means you cannot receive or make any calls. Okay. And uh, next is um, quite easy. It is talk. Okay, with this command, uh, we can just check the memory usages you can hit check from here the memories use the free and we also can check the cpu usages okay um, with this command uh, if something wrong with um, uh, one of the process like the database or asterisk you will find the issue easily with the command here you can see it will choose uh, which process consumes uh, a lot of uh, a lot of CPU. Okay, so if you receive a complaint from the customer, uh, the CPU CPU is overload. Okay, you can do the first round troubleshooting. Log in the SSH. Okay, and check the CPU usage with the command tool. 
for example, if you can see the first one is a, a database like a MySQL um, or Asterisk, and the CPU is uh, like uh, 18 or 19. So that means something wrong with the, the process. Then you just send send us the screenshot 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 to us and we will know how to handle it. So it is a, a more efficient way to solve your problem, okay? Because you have pair bars to do the first round troubleshootings. Okay. Okay, the, I think the Linux command is quite easy. So I will not take a lot of time to talk about these commands, okay? And let's just have a quick review of the commands. And um, you will see we have a, other, a lot of other Linux commands here, but I just tell you some useful or you, can, you may use for daily life, daily work. So if you're interested about other um, commands, you can have a try after this training, okay? Here you can see we have um, if config to check the network information, okay? And um, we have uh, root to check the static routes and to check the gateways, okay? And how to add a default gateway, delete the default gateway, something like that, you can just have a try of the training. Okay, so next is, uh, how to check the PBX firmware version. Okay, this is a very quick way to check the firmware version. Okay, and uh, with uh, WISE 2, you can just have a try. With this command, you can check the SN number and hardware version. And uh, the MES3 is important. Okay, it can help us to check some hardware related issues. And also you can reboot the PBX uh, by the reboot command. And uh, IP tables to check the firewall rules. And I introduced today is about the PS, check the current running process. And the top, check the CPU and memory usages. And also you can use uh, DF to check the disk usages, okay? The important is uh, NS lookup to check a uh, domain, if a domain can be reserved by the DNS server. Okay, uh, I think that's the first part. And um, it, it is a um, uh, command things you just practice, you will remember it, right? So no worries, you can find this document from the handout. You can download it and practice of this training. Okay. Um, let's go move on to the next part is about the uh, asterisk commands. Um, next, I, I'd like to introduce how to log in asterisk to check the uh, check the channels to check the states of extensions and the chunks and how to do a troubleshooting of uh, registration in C. Okay. To log in the asterisk, the command is like this. Asterisk dash V R. Okay. Um, just make sure you you have input five, five, V is okay. So five, six, seven, that is the same. Okay, asterisk, dash V, 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 R, and press N, enter. You will see the difference. Here, it shows IPPBX, CLI. And um, you will see, there are a lot of logs are running here and um, uh, this is what we mentioned, the CLI log. It's quite simple to capture a CLI log, okay? That is a, 
a very easy way. You just input the asterisk dash v or press enter. Then the log will run it automatically. You just wait for a while and reproduce your issue and then stop it by press control and C and then copy the log and send to us or you can just have a check copy it to the loopad 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 browser we we use the this app it is um i think it is a good one or you can use others like uees okay <clears throat> and um I will introduce uh, more about the CI log later. Okay, about uh, what what is um, what we can get from a CI log. You can see we have some uh, debug messages. We can also have some safe safe signalings. And later I will tell you that part. But the first part I will tell you how to use uh, some asterisk commands to check some informations. Okay. And uh, to make it clear to see, I will disable the logs. I disable them first. Okay. Set call set debug. Debug off. And you just say set logger off. Okay. I just uh, disable logs. And uh, I'll show you the first uh, <clears throat> commands to check the channels is call show. Call show, if you press a tab, you can see other commands or other keywords over here. You can have a try, but today I will show you about the call show channels. So um, uh, what, what is about the channel? Uh, every core has its own channel, uh, one extension or the core to extension or the core to uh, IVR or to a uh, ring group, it will have its own channel. And if I press enter, you can, you can check here. <clears throat> you can check here, core show channel, core show channels. Here's the channel name. Location, state, okay. There is no course if, uh, across the PBX now. So there is um, zero active channels. And you can, with this command, you can check uh, the current active course and the maximum maximum concurrent course. For this PBX, it is uh, 25. 25 max active course. <clears throat> If uh, if I make a call and uh, you will see here we have a channel name and the state states of the channel, okay. So let me just make a call and I will show you different uh, before you pick up a call or you pick up a call answer a call how the channel how it, it will shows in the channel, okay. So if I Social channels, there's no course. And then if I make a call, like uh, if I make a call to this PBX, an uh, internal course. Okay, this time I check the states and then we answer it, say hello. Check the states. And then, and then and up the core. Again, we check the channels. Okay, let's stop it by control C and uh, right click copy to the loop pad plus. Paste it and press control F. To, to filter the call show 
channels then all okay okay this is a uh, if there's a no course you can see there's no channels uh, zero active channels no course over there okay and if there is a core you can see the channel we have a channel name channel name this is a channel name and this is uh, uh, locations about the type plan and this is state rainy rain or rainy okay so um, the ring means the corner number okay so the core is from the three seven two here this guy is thirty seven two okay so the, the ring the ring means the caller caller number and ringing means the calling number so the core from the thirty seven two to the thirty seven one and you can see there are two channels for the three seven one that is because um, uh, two extensions reject to two endpoints. Okay, we can just check from the web here. You can see uh, a a phone and a web. Here you can see this is a web. So there are two channels for the extension. Okay, and. Then you will see it will cause the one concurrent call, okay? And if I pick up the call, you can see the state becomes to up for the caller or calling. That means the call is established, okay? And if I hand up the call, then the channel will be clear. There's no channels here. So I will tell you this because um, uh, for some common issues we have, that is um, the issues like uh, if the customer complains the extension 3001, it is available, all right? But I don't know uh, what is going on. These guys cannot receive any calls. I don't know if you guys have uh, have met this issue before, but I have uh, met this issue. Uh, a lot of customers have this issue because uh, for some customers they have uh, a lot of a large extensions, a large cost, so the channel will be like uh, stopped, will be stuck. So if you, you, you receive a complaint that's a one of the extension uh, just cannot receive calls, okay? But the state is available, okay? Then you have to check if the channel has been stuck. The way is log in the SSH and go to the CRI, the Aster risk, okay, with its command. And then use the command call show channels. Okay, so for example, you can see if there's no course, okay, but there is a channel name named 3001, okay, and the state is up. That means the core is just, uh, uh, the, the channel has been stuck. You have to release it uh, manually. Then the extension can receive calls. Okay, I will show you how to release the channel. If you okay, if you fan, you if you use the command call show channel fan. One extension has been stuck over here, and then you use this command channel request. 
channel and with the name the channel name like uh, for example the channel name is um, like this pgc okay the extension name and with a uh, red number okay channel request hand up and uh, channel name after, after you press enter the channel will be released because there's no channel so it is just, uh, it, it, it is not a known channel okay that's just an example so this is uh, quite important for you guys to do the troubleshooting and to receive the problem okay um, and let's move on and uh, next is about the pjc pjc shoe okay the previous is call shoe now this pjc shoe also you can press tab to check the other parameters you can check but uh, today i'll show you the PGC show stages. And another one is PGC show endpoints. I will show you what is the difference. Okay, stop it. This is a uh, PJ save shoe endpoints. And uh, with this command, you can check the extension uh, states and the chunk states. Chunk states, okay, not in use, unavailable, not in use, okay? But uh, in my, uh, for, for myself, I prefer to use uh, this, this one. PGC show status. This is a um, year start building command. Okay, this is a more um, brief. You can check the, all the extensions here and um, registered or unavailable. Okay, and if it, it is registered, you can check the IPs and uh, the latency. And for the chunk, that is the same. You can check the states of the chunk the ips okay and uh, next i will show you how to check uh, uh issues about the registration uh, a chunk of registration issues okay so um next um, i will tell you about the uh, ci log uh, and uh, how to use a CR log to do some troubleshootings. Okay. Um, let's look in the CRI first. Then you can see there are logs uh, running over here. And um, uh, the first thing you have to enable the log um, because uh, uh, the the save log uh, the save debug is um, disabled by default, so it is like this this way. Like uh, from the web, maintenance system log, uh, log level. Okay, if you if you guys have submitted a ticket to us for some issues. We always we always ask you guys to enable the debug and the save debug right for the system log uh, because uh, only you just enable then we can get the uh, uh, logs in the CR log or the system log okay so that is the same you just um, enable the save debug and debug this is for the for the system log, okay? But for the CR log, 
you have to use the command command to enable it. Okay, the command is like a pg pgc set logger on. Okay, here you can see we get some steep signals over here, right? So <clears throat> remember this command, pgc say log on. And uh, if you do not want to check the pg uh, the steep signals, you can use a pgc say log off. Then the the, the steep signal is missing and only have the debug messages over here. So for the PGCF state log, we have another uh, useful with is uh, like a PGCF state log host. And then with an um, IP, or a domain. Okay, PGC set log on or off is to enable or disable the safe debug. And PGC set log host and uh, with a IP or domain. This is a way to do some troubleshooting about uh, registration issues. Okay, so. Now, I will tell you if you have an uh, issue with the trunk registration, it is a failed to register to the server, like uh, this one. This is a register regist trunk. It is um, a trunk register to, oh, my, to my uh, S cloud, and it is failed. So, how to do the troubleshooting uh, with uh, SSH? I will show you how to do that, okay? So, um, the first way, the first step is log into the CRI, okay? And uh, you have to confirm. The state of the chunk, okay? With the command pg save show. Status. Okay? So the first step is check the state of the chunk. Status of the chunk. Okay, you can see here the Gavin S curve. Oh. It is a shoe registered from the back end, okay? But from the web, it is it is down. So what is going on? Let's do the troubleshooting, okay? This is a domain, right? Let's just copy this domain. Then, we go to the CI log and um, with the command, you remember the PGC set logger host with the domain name. Okay, so this with this command, the PBX will you you will ask the PBX to to send a new request to reject uh, this chunk to the uh, other side. Okay, so it will trigger the PBX to send a new request. You press enter. Then let's wait for a while. Wait for the signaling running. Okay, I think the PBX uh, already sent a lot of requests to to the S cap. Okay, then let's just stop it. 
I think it's enough. Press Control C, stop it. Okay, then copy it to a loop, loop plus, right? I think you guys have this application, right? Be quite useful. So for a uh, registration, instead we have to filter with the keywords. It is a uh, re Regest and see. And here you can see there are so many regest here. Let's just check this one. This is a regest to the S Club, and you will find here is a transmission SIP request. That means this message, this request is sent from our PBX to this IP. Okay, this is, um, I think the it is a SBC IP of the cloud PBX. So that means transmission means the PBX send the request to the S cloud reject. Okay, from here is account, it is account chunk, so it is account number. And next, you just mark this call ID with um, color you like, because um, for uh, for a live PBX, there are so many registrations or or, or calls over here, so you you will lost. Uh, you will can find it, uh, what is uh, related to your. Your registration or your call. You have to use this call ID to identify uh, what is the, the registration, what is the session you are looking for. Okay, and then we just find next. Here is four zero four zero one on order on order priced. This is uh, received, okay? It is uh, means our PBX received the, this response from the, this IP. 401 means um, it asked for the authentication, okay? So we should send a new request with the authentication, okay? That, that is what we do. But uh, let's see what is going on next. Then, oh, we also, we still, we still receive the 401. Okay, you can see 401, we just uh, 401, we just 401. Oh, this is a quite um, obviously, that means uh, authentication, something wrong with uh, authentication. Okay, for the uh, registration flow, it is, uh, Request a request to the server. The server reply a four zero one, and then you you send a, another request to the server with the authentication parameters, and then uh, the server will reply you a two hundred OK. Okay, but we didn't get a two hundred OK, but a lot of four zero one. That is a problem, uh, because. Um, you have to check um, if the the username or the password is correct. Okay, so this is a way how we do a troubleshooting with commands. Okay, uh, I I did it. I just changed the password to show you how to uh, do a troubleshooting. So if I input the correct password. It will be rejected successfully. So I just show you a, a whole way of complete way to to do the troubleshooting as we okay you can see it is rejected. Okay. 
And um, next, uh, next uh, I will show you the uh, what is a diet plan and uh, how to use uh, CI log or system log to do troubleshooting. Okay, that is actually the, the last part of our today's training. And um, Uh, we, we log into the CRI, okay? And uh, maybe you guys may have a question that uh, we can just get um, capture a PCAP from the web to check the safe signalings. So why do we have to uh, capture from the SSH and the CRI to capture logs? Okay, that because uh, beside the safe signalings, we have uh, other uh, other uh, informations and messages in the CRI. So, and except the safe signalings, um, uh, we will get uh, debug messages. Okay, you can see here. And uh, what is the most important? We will get a die plan. I will show you. If I make a call for another PBX, this is another PBX, right? Two, three, seven, one. Say hello and bye. Then you will see the dive fans over here. To make it clear, uh, I will just also disable other logs. Just show you the type plan part, okay? Okay, I'll make a call again. Up it, say hello and bye. Then let's back to the CRI. Here, the words with the purple color, you can see they are the type plan, what I mentioned, the type plan. Here you can see. With a type plan, you will know how our core go through the PBX. Like uh, it is the incoming core because it, it is go to the call in check. That means it is an incoming call, right? Let me stop it. And it is go to the call in check first. That means it is an incoming call. Then it go to the check. The chunk name 29 and uh, doll 120. Okay, you can check here. We have this chunk 29 doll 120. Then let's scroll down. Okay. It go to the ring group. Okay. Go to the ring group. Six. Six three zero zero, and then let's go down. It go to the final destination, the like extension three seven one. Here you can see the channel name. Okay, that means the this extension answer the call. Okay, so. Except the safe signalings, we can get um, um, debug messages and uh, the die plan. It is like um, I would say it is like a, a to do list for the PBX. Uh, I think this is um, um, for you to understand. It, it is it is better for you to understand. 
it is like a to-do list for the PBX. So the PBX will follow the scripts one by one. And, and so the PBX will now, if put, uh, if send a call to uh, IVR or send it to a ring group, and that is because the PBX just follow the, the die plan. Okay, that is why the PBX will how to will know how to handle a call. So PBX will implement the scripts one by one and strictly. So what is a die plan? I will show you that. Let me copy this and uh, later we will compare it compare it with the time plan. Okay, okay. How? Oh, let's go to the the directory to check the time plan. So S to risk. S to risk. Over here, you can see a lot of configuration files. And uh, one of them is named uh, extension. Extension the comfort configuration. So the die plan, die plan we just mentioned is about this guy. Extensions configuration. Extensions dot C O N F. Okay. This is the die plan we just mentioned and here you can see if I find this chunk you can see there are there are a lot of uh, um, so, uh, scripts over here okay this is uh, one of the scripts and we named it as uh, context so there are so many context here. You can, this is the one, the coin chain context. And there are lots of command here. And maybe you can jump to another context if you meet the condition. Okay, so let me check the coin, coin chain script. The first step, second step, the third step, the PBX just follow the list. The first one is set the CDR inbound. Okay, just tell us that it is an inbound route, inbound core. And second, set the C, CID DTMF. Let's check here. This is the we. This is the log we just captured from the CRI. Okay, you can see ex executing the first step set the CDR inbound and the second step CID DTML no. And then to execute the go to if, if meet another condition, it will jump to another script. Okay, so this is a Type plan, and this is um, important things that PPX will follow the steps one by one and to execute uh, and post the call. Okay, so um, what can we do with the type plan? And in some cases, the customer wants to realize some new, new features, uh, but uh, we can't realize it from the, there's no the features from the web, right? For example, uh, a customer just asked me if we can just um, set the incoming number to unknown because um, it is a call center and the, the boss do, the, the boss fan, the employees will sell the numbers to other companies. So the, the, the customer want to ask to realize a future that uh, if we can just uh, show unknown, if if there is an incoming call here, that uh, uh, the the extensions, the agents cannot see the number. Okay, we can realize it. We do not have this feature. 
then we can use a time plan, time plan to realize it. Okay, because like here you can see, for example, we can just change from here, call in check. This is incoming call, okay? The step, I can just uh, uh, input another step and just to, to set the, the number to unknown here. Okay, the PPX will uh, execute this step. And for example, uh, because of the time, I cannot just show you a whole whole procedure to change a time plan. But like sh let me show you this. Let's, this is a set the caller ID number unknown. Set the call the ID name unknown, right? You can see here, there's no step three, step four to set the uh, call ID name. Okay, this is a default, default type plan. But to realize this, uh, this scenario, we can just input this two lines to the type plan. Okay, then we can realize this feature. That's just a, that is an example. Just show you uh, how we can do with a type plan to realize new features or to change some uh, some parameters that uh, we can not uh, make it from the web okay and with the type plan with the type plan yeah as i show you you can know where's where's the step the ppx is uh, executes that means if the core after something wrong with the core, you you can check the type plan. So uh, you can find the problem in which step the PPX go to the the, the issue happens before the core go to the IVR, or the the issue happens uh, after the core get to a ring group. So that is really help for us to do some troubleshootings. Okay, and. Uh, at last, I have a case for you guys. And uh, just please take um, one minute to check the, the check the case and we will just, um, I will show you how to uh, do a troubleshooting with uh, uh, CLI or system log and uh, what is the difference between the CLI and the system log. Okay, so give you guys just one minute. Okay, it is quite simple and just check the ensue. Okay, it is um, in still like an uh, extension. Uh, 3001, make a call to external number, uh, 1001. But the call always go, goes to another external number, uh, 5002, 5, okay? So, and this is a daytime 
and the color coding number. Okay. This is a, a, like a, if you submit a ticket and you will uh, uh, send us the signal. And we always ask you to help to provide the date, time, and color coding number. Because in a system log, there are so many logs in it. So it is more efficient for us to find the issue. Okay. And before um, to do the troubleshooting, I will tell you the difference between the CI log and the system log. Okay. The CI log uh, is actually a live log, just like I show you. Um, you can just uh, capture a live log, uh, a live core, a live registration. Okay. Um, for some uh, issues, um, uh, that the issues you can reproduce every time. Okay, it is an um, efficient way to capture CL, CLI live log. But for some issues, it is a lot, uh, it is um, a random issue not happen every time. So we have to use the CI log, uh, system log to check the problem, okay? And uh, the content of the CI log and system log is the same. Just we can just get the same type plan scripts, the debug messages and save signals, okay? But what I mentioned, the, the same is uh, only about the PBX log. When you open a system log, you will find a lot, a lot of logs over here, and other logs are recorded for other events. But uh, we usually use these two guys: PBX log zero and PBX log one. And uh, the PBX log zero is the latest one. Okay, so I'm, I mean the content of the PBX log the same as a CR log. Okay, that is a difference. And um, the program, I will prepare a system log here and uh, it named with a date, date and uh, you find here, let's find these two, two, two logs. I'm not sure, uh, if the issue course in the first one or second one. So it's quite important to find the, the time. It is uh, 1 p.m., like uh, 1.50 p.m. So let's just quick open it and check the time. Oh, you can see the latest one is already uh, 13.20, so we have to check uh, the early one. Yes. And then for uh, core issues, we will fil filter the keywords like uh, invite, okay. All the course, the first thing really is invite, all right? So then you can see there's so many cores and because this is a test of PBX, you can see the same, the simple, there's all, a lot of the same numbers, but for a real, a live PBX, it, it is a very big messages and you will take a lot of time to find the call. So if you, Provide the time and the caller calling number. We will find it quickly. Okay. The time's here. Okay. The time is correct. And the number is to 1001. Three thousand one to one thousand one. 
and the time is correct. Okay, I think this is a call we are looking for. And the first step is uh, mark the call ID, call ID, sorry. Okay, then we can, <clears throat> we can just check if the call flow is correct, okay? Next, 401, ASK, ACK, invite again, one hand trying, one 18 raining, and two hand okay, and then ACK, and bye. That means the chorus is tempered and answered by the other side, but uh, go to a round destination. So that is a problem. So <clears throat> let's back to the first uh, invite here. Then, uh, as I told you before, we can just uh, check and, and um, <clears throat> confirm which step have the problem with the die plan, right? So <clears throat> usually we will find the one hand you're trying. The die plan will start after the one hand you're trying. Here we have a channel. We mark this channel, and you can disting distinguish this from other cores. Okay, and um, you can see go to the top there, go to the blah blah blah. And what we want to find is about the <clears throat> because the core is answered, I will check. Uh, which chunk just uh, the call go through which chunk? So I use the uh, answer to filter the next answer here. You can see this is uh, our channel and answer, and you will find this chunk is uh, Gavin Picard answered this channel. So this is a problem because uh, just to make a call to to, to the 1001 is not, it is uh, hardware PBX P, P560, but it, it is go to a Gavin P cloud chunk. So the problem is the core goes to a RAM chunk and to a RAM destination. So let's go back to the web and, and to check the the album route. Yes, we found the problem. Okay, because all the dial panel is the X door for these three three outbound routes. So no matter what number you die, it will go to the pickup because it is has the first, uh, the, the first priority. All right. So it will go to the pickup. No matter what number you die, it will go to the pickup. So the problem is to, to resolve the problem. You can change it to change the die panel because uh, all the extension on the pickup is start, start with number five. Okay. You can change this and for All the course to this PBX is, is start from number one. Change this. And for course to the S crowd, um, no, this is a S, S100. It start from two. You just uh, set different uh, dial panel. Then it will tell the PBX to go to the right destination. Okay, then let's make a test. From here, sorry. Wrong. Yes, the problem is to reserve. Okay, that is quite simple. And um, I think this is uh, uh, all the uh, all 
the content I will tell you and share with you today. And I hope you guys uh, will learn something. And um, here you will see, and can you see it on your screen? It just uh, help, uh, help us to finish it, uh, uh, the poll because um, it will help us to improve the, the courses better and better, okay? And uh, I hope you guys will learn something. And, but I didn't find any questions uh, from you guys. I'm not sure if the, the training is quite easy for you guys. No problem. If you have uh, any questions, um, uh, you can just email me, and um, maybe later we will have uh, another level uh, troubleshooting webinar trainings. Okay. And um, I found uh, just. Uh, um, let's just wait uh, wait for one minute because um, there are two guys are not uh, read the this course and uh, um, up to something just after this um, uh, webinar uh, there will be there will um, pop up survey and. Uh, it will take you like um, two minutes or three minutes, and you can just um, give some give, give us some feedback about the course, about the content, about anything you want to tell us. Okay. Okay, I think um, another guy is um, is leaving his PC. Never mind. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Um, I didn't find any questions, and uh, if you have any questions, you can just let me know. Okay. I'm not sure if the course is easy or hard for you guys. If you guys can give me your feedback, it is appreciated. Okay, if there's no problem, that's it, all of today's training. Thank you guys, thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for your uh, listening and uh, you can just have a try and practice of this training okay so bye bye, -bye. have a nice day don't don't forget about the, the pop-up so we thank you thank you